All right. You guys know the deal? You're watching Every Man in School and Cheers. All right. Oh, yeah, we're doing a shot glass, oh. right? Uh, now, we'll do the first first our drinks and then the shot. Okay, I like All it. Right. I'll open my a little CC drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're watching... M uh, that was Wait, terrible. I didn't know you, I, we didn't count us down <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll count us down to one. Seven, two, one. You're, You're watching, watching MMA Nip. Skol! Cheers, you gentlemen. Dobry vir cher MMA Nip na zdrovie. I don't know what he said. It's been too long. I was going to say you're drinking MMA... Oh, you're watching MMA Skol. I don't know. I messed up. All right. He's already <laughs> wasted. Jesus. In true John Morgan Skol! fashion. So, we are at a, at a prehistoric event. Uh, welcome to MMA Nip Skol, the only show that you never knew you needed, uh, but was always there. Uh, I am, of course, the douchiest host in the biz, Sebastian Vettel Martinez. True. Joined here by uh, MMA junkies John Morgan, a man whose reputation and talent is only matched by his waistline. Mm -hmm. And uh, some guy uh, who, judging by his hair, is like 55 years old or something. Uh, no, MMA is Stefan Rumare making his debut on the show. Uh, and being Finally. Yeah, finally. It, it's been it's been a while. Uh, it's been literally no demand, but you're finally here now. How's uh, it feel? It feels good. It feels amazing. I just hope I uh, don't drag the show down. So I'm gonna try my best. Well, I mean, you're dissing, failed already. Yeah, you're dissing <laughs> yourself way more than I. Uh, yeah, you can't diss yourself because I'm already I'm already gunning for you. So uh, we are here for. Uh, UFC Fight Night 136, a.k.a. UFC Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, historic event, Mark Hunt takes on Alexi Olenek, and uh, there are some other fights happening that none of you can probably name. Uh, so, first things first, we are in Russia, and first things first, I'm a realist. Uh, so, we got a nice bottle of... Take it away, John! Be Bino Betakal... What is... Bro, what is that? I, just what, so... So well, everybody knows we're not being ridiculous. I mean, look at that. Like, if you can spell that, God bless you, but... Well, uh, it is in Cyrillic. And, yeah, it, and... it, it, uh, it's the... Uh, in fact... In, oh, I was just kidding. I knew what this was all along. It's the White Buffalo Vodka. Oh, of course. Uh, wait, did you even buy the right stuff? This is... Vodka. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Off-brand vodka. <laughs> oh, off vodka. <laughs> oh, off vodka in Russia? <laughs> Is this going to make it us blind? literally starts with a B. Are we going to get hepatitis from this? <laughs> All right, I had my, my shot, so it's cool. All right, <laughs> cheers to hepatitis. Yeah. Yep, that was okay. Oh, Did I tell you guys that it was the cheapest vodka ever? It was the finest, cheapest vodka ever was. And oh, Stefan's actually doing a pretty solid job drinking. Wow. Thank you. Uh, I try my best. Uh, it was a nice, nice shot, actually. Well, you got to compensate because uh, the, the, like the, the girls shopping at the liquor store I went to, like nobody was touching this shit. Like uh, there was barely any. This was the only non-beer, non-hard liquor thing available that uh, Princess Stefan yeah. over here requested. So... Uh, first things, uh, oh yeah, second things, fat second, impressions of Moscow and Russia. I mean, the traffic is off the hook. Oh, fucking uh, traffic city. Yeah, but I mean, the, the architecture and, yeah, I mean, I love Moscow. Uh, great. It's cool, yeah. I mean, definitely, as you said, the, the traffic is awful. I mean, I, it, there's just no getting around it. It's terrible. Um, the subways are cool, which is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the stations are awesome. So that's kind of fun, actually, to, to jump on the public transit and see these, like, marble stations with artwork and statues and stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, but for me, it, it's probably a little bit different than you guys uh, as an American. Like, it's, it's, it's especially kind of cool being here. And uh, it's been fun, like, talking to, uh, like, bartenders and stuff like that. We've been out just... Uh, you know, what did they think of Americans growing up? What did we think of Russians growing up? You know, how was it? I mean, we were we were enemies, you know, for yeah. years and years and years. And so um, it's cool, man. I, I like it. It's it's a definitely, uh, you know, Red Square was awesome. And, and yeah, it's just a, just a place. Powerful. Like, very powerful. Just standing there. It's like you can feel the history. You can feel like just, I don't know, just hundreds and hundreds of years of power and dominance. Just like. I agree. Oh, don't forget the oppression. And oppression, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's uh, it's it's been amazing. I've 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 loved it. I've really enjoyed it. Um, you know, looking forward to hopefully coming back at some point. You know, we still don't know what the MMA crowd is going to be like. That's what I'm anxious to see. How do people react? How do they, you know, how do they take the fights? All those things. But it's just as far as the city itself. I don't know, man. If you've ever thought about coming here, uh, 
Go for it. Do I mean, it. I, 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 I dig it. it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been fun. I mean, I've, I, think, I think it's a lot of fun. Like, unfortunately, it's not a great city for vegans. Uh, there's, I've, <laughs> I've never eaten this much potato in my life. <laughs> Literally every day I'm fucking eating potatoes. Uh, but aside from that, it's actually really cool. I dig it. It's weird. It's definitely very Eastern. Uh, it's uh, got these weird sort of like illogical nuances uh, here and there. It's just like this doesn't make any sense. This is like just like some Soviet general just like had too much power and decided let's build it like this, and nobody had the balls to say like anything uh, to, against it. So, uh, but we are here for a fight night card that well, is. Uh, they've, they've done pretty good in the ladies' department, though. Oh, well, yes. yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> just that. It's not hard to look around at people, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm a married man. I stay faithful. But the people watching ain't hard to do. Well, one thing that is hard to find here, though, is, like, black people. Like, it's like, where's Waldo uh, every time you're out? I saw two. I don't think I've seen a single. I've, I've, seen, I've seen two black people. I hadn't really thought about that, though. Last time I, or that guy in the yeah. mascot suit with the donut, he was black. But yeah. we couldn't, I'm assuming, unless they did, like, black face like but a... on his arms. Yeah, you're right. I hadn't thought about that. You don't. You haven't seen it. Yeah. Eesh. All right, so we're here for a card. Moving like, basically, really, <laughs> definitely, in the sha- this is in the shadow of UFC 228. Mm. Uh, this is not a publicized card, which is a shame. It should be more publicized. This is historic. This is a big deal. Uh, Russia has been one of the, on the forefront of MMA uh, it's, I mean, de- since the start in some ways, but definitely in the past couple of years, we've seen so much talent come through here. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a shame that, like, yeah, they, we're not really publicizing this card the way they should. I think that um, in a lot of ways, this is almost a test card. You know, mm. doing business in a country like Russia is different. There's the, the Things are handled different. You don't know what kind of hiccups you're going to encounter, what kind of hurdles you're going to encounter. And I think from what an kind oper- of elections are going to be rigged? You never know. I mean, you know, you, you got to love the Russian hackers. They're going to get in there and do what they got to do. Um, is Snowden still here? But, but, you know, I think you got to be mm-hmm. careful. Uh, I, I think that was the whole thing. It's like, hey, let's go into the market. And first of all, you know, they, want, they needed to do it on Fight Pass because it needed to be local time. You cannot come into a market like Russia and say, hey, we're going to treat you like Japan, and we're going to say, you know, hey, can you guys show up at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning? You can't do that. You know what I, I mean? I said it before. Traditionally, Russians don't like being told what to do. So There you go. So they came in. They catered to the market. They made sure. And from all indications, ticket sales are awesome. It sounds mm-hmm. like, you know, you're talking about well over 20,000 tickets already sold. Um, there's a very real possibility, I've been told, that this will be the biggest, like, non – and I say non-stadium event. It is at Olympic Stadium, but they, they scaled it down to yeah. begin with. They, they took half the stadium, and that's the way they built it. But So this could be a very, very successful event. But, yeah, I, I know a lot of people were like, why isn't Habib here? You know, Why isn't this a pay-per-view? I, I think there's a possibility they could do a pay-per-view at some point. That if Habib remains champion, that they'll have Habib defend his title. I think that will happen. But I think in a lot of ways this was like, hey, let's get, our, let's get in the market. Let's get our feet wet. Let's make sure. And there were, and, and by the way, there were issues. Like, I, you know, speaking to people behind the scenes, you know, employees, equipment, you know, having visa issues, having concern. You know what I mean? So there were concerns, and I think you know that's why they kind of kind of did it the way they did, and, and and maybe didn't blow this thing up the way some people wish they would. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I mean, first of all, I like the fact that Stefan is compensating for his girliness with his vodka. Bo- uh, but yeah, vodka. Actually, it starts with vodka, starts, starts yeah. with a BB. I, I guarantee you, we're gonna get some kind of disease <laughs> from this. Uh, but uh, uh, that is actually a good point. I, I do think of the next show in Russia will definitely be bigger. Hopefully, it'll be Khabib time. Uh, but I mean, there's a little bit of controversy for the whole Russia, Dagestan, like. Not everyone here is a Khabib fan, which is surprising. That's what's been interesting. So we, we actually shot a video today where since we were here, we figured, you know, let's go talk to Russian fans and, like, see if we can find one Connor fan. Like, how, how wild would that be if we could find one Connor fan? Um, and we found a bunch. You know, yeah. it, was, it was about 50-50 down the middle. So that's been kind of an, an eye-opening thing to learn about uh, this week is that everybody is aware of Habib, but not everybody supports Habib. It's not, yeah. you know, like, the, I mean, the entire – well, I say the entire – most of the entire country of Ireland is behind Connor. Some of them haven't liked his antics as of late. But at one point, it seemed like every damn person in the country, you know, was behind him. That's not the case with Habib. It's a little bit different. So um, that's been wild to hear. I did, I did learn this week, though, that, that Fedor is God here. Like, in yeah. talking to people, he is an, an incredibly revered athlete. You know, he is every bit as popular as we think he is. 
Habib is definitely popular. He, people, people definitely know who he is. It's not that nobody's, you know, that there's anybody that's not aware of him, just not the entire country says, hey, I'm a Habib fan. But, I mean, every uh, – Fedor has been doing his thing for so long, and every hardcore fan probably reveres Fedor like that. Mm. Uh, and I think with time, Habib's going to get there for sure. Well, I mean, that's discounting a whole bunch of, like, ethnic and religious tension that's been there, like, probably longer than Fader has. Well, that's I mean, that's 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 what's hard. And, and, and again, um, I saw a tweet, I think, last week where John Gooden was like, man, I'm really, you know, I'm really studying all the ethnic issues and, and concerns because I want to make sure I don't slip up and say something I shouldn't on the broadcast. But you're right, like... It is a complicated issue the way things have been here, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know the the caucuses and the independent republics and all Cox, these things. What? The cox caucuses. <laughs> you knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, so it's it's interesting to see how um, how people treat things. You know what I mean? And and uh, we don't necessarily understand it because it's like. You know, I was telling people, like, listen, in American schools, we didn't grow up learning Soviet history. You know what I mean? Like, especially I'm, I'm 40 years old. You know, like when I was a kid, they were the enemy. That's all we knew. That's all we knew in school was like they got bombs pointed at us and we got bombs pointed at them. You know, so we're so learning. A lot has changed. It's just it's from the Middle East right. now. <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly right. We're still looking for war. Uh, no, but so it's interesting because it, it, it's not something we grew up learning and grew up knowing about. So we, it is interesting, you know. A Dagestani, a Chechen, a Russian, you know, how, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's different, man. It's, it's very, very complicated. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend, uh, dis despite the candor that I have on this show, that I actually know a whole lot about it. I just know my basic knowledge of it is that, uh, like, Chechnya, Dagestan, they, they were, like, basically independent regions or states. Uh, then they got taken over the USSR, and then when the USSR disbanded, uh, most countries and states and regions, they receive very, you know, independence, right. except for a couple, uh, including Dagestan and, and Chechnya and a couple of others, that place where Adam Yandiev is from, mm -hmm. uh, who none of us can... Finish. I remember, you threw it out there, that it was Ish, 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 or something? Ishtar, yeah. something, yeah. Ishtar. Ishtar. Is that a movie? It was. Yeah, with, with um, Dustin Hoffman? It was. Yeah. Look at you. It's See? pretty good. Cool, Dustin yeah. Hoffman. Yeah. Legend. That's yeah, I mean, he's he's way up there with Kevin Spacey. It's, you know, it's wow. solid, solid stuff, solid wow. stuff. Uh, so, so anyway, we are here uh, to actually cover the UFC event. Um, we, as usual, we go through the card. But before we get to the main card, which is a little bit slim, it's four fights, uh, the main card, it's fight path card. It's going to be a nice fight path tempo, but we don't have to Love sit that. waiting for those fucking yeah. commercial breaks. Love that. Hashtag America. But, um... Uh, uh, so before we get to the main card, let me just get this extremely slow, shitty Chinese phone to uh, <laughs> look at the loading time. It's embarrassing. What are you looking for, man? It, it's the, the loading the web page is taking longer than Stefan's interviews with fighters. Like seriously, this is a, this is terrible. And they're they're short. It's just that I talk slowly. The the interviews themselves aren't long. They just feel long because I never get the fucking words out of my mouth. Well, yeah, so. it's it's like 30, 30 seconds to one minute. And from yeah. what I understand, it's not the only thing that lasts thirty seconds to one minute. So, uh, hey, you, uh, you've been <laughs> anyway. talking to your mom lately? What she oh, told you? No, we got somebody <sighs> firing back. Yeah. Somebody firing back. She was extremely disappointed, by the way. Yeah. Well, uh, well I I hit it, so that that's all that counts. No, she hit you. She told she she told me about the strap on. Uh, so anyway, we got an undercard here with some interesting fights. Actually, we got uh, some up and coming guys. Uh, if you guys have to pick one undercard fight to keep an eye on, uh, fans shouldn't miss. What would that be? We're actually starting with a newcomer, Stefan. Uh, I have to say, Merbeck Tysonov and uh, Desmond Green. It's mm. gonna be interesting to see like how does. Uh, I mean, Desmond Green, he seemed like uh, super like happy-go-lucky, even though he was in like a fatal accident just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Maribek Tyson all missed weight, and he's a fucking super talent, so for sure that's my, my people's main event, or whatever you want to call it. I actually spoke to Desmond Green today at the, uh, at the breakfast buffet. I was trying to decide which juice to have, uh, and he was there, and I was just what, like... Were there more than one Jew there? Hey. hey! Well, not in this country. I'm pretty sure they're all Orthodox, right? And there's no homosexuals either. So, uh, but I was me. And oh, I was. No, I mean, uh, well, the, just the three of us. But 
Uh, wow. Let's see how, how far can we go before like the KGB wow. storm in and like take us to like anti-gay concentration it's, camps. It's coming soon, by the way. <laughs> We're gonna be hearing a knock on the yeah. door soon. Uh, no, but I talked to Desmond Green, and I mean, I'm almost 100 percent sure that he wasn't like responsible uh, because he his just his attitude, everything, just either that or he's a fucking. Psycho. Oh, like, yeah. oh, I killed or, two yeah. people last night. He's like, oh, it's let's cool. dance. <laughs> what, what the fuck? Like, he was dancing at breakfast. Yeah, it, it's gonna be one or the other. He's either completely innocent or he's a fucking mass murderer. Uh, but he's, I mean, he was just, uh, I talked about it. A, uh, he's gonna get 40% of Tyson's mm -hmm. purse, uh, which is uh, honest, well deserved. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, but he just seemed so chill and relaxed. And uh, I, yeah, I definitely agree that's gonna be a good fight. Mr. Morgan? So there's two fights that I'll be looking, okay? One is uh, Rustam Havilov versus Cajun Johnson. Mm -hmm. That is not so much about the fight. It's just the stories Politics. around. Yeah, that's yeah. it, man. You know what I mean? Did you see our interview with Johnson where he was like, yeah, I'm probably going to get cut it, if, they, if I lose this fight. And he fight. knows it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, the, so that's, in, that's intriguing to me. I mean, Cajun's definitely a guy that's fighting for fighter rights and looking for unionization and all that. So, uh, and, and certainly he's got a tough matchup, you know. Uh, so that one is interesting for me just because of what it means, not necessarily the fight itself, but kind of what happens to fallout. The one that I would pay attention to uh, is, is kicking off the night, uh, Marab Devalishvili versus Terry and Ware. Uh, mm -hmm. Marab Devalishvili, I think, is uh, an incredibly talented guy. Uh, was certainly, you know, mired in some controversy last time out. Yeah. Um, but I think he's definitely got some skills. And meanwhile, Terry and Ware is a guy that I have been incredibly impressed with, um, despite the fact that he's 0-3 in, in the UFC, but, uh, you know, facing just ridiculous levels of competition in every fight. So I'm wondering, like... Which UFC executive, executive's wife did he fuck? Right, he did something. Yeah, he did something, man. Because, I mean, he has not been given, like, and even, like, when, like, against Tom Dukin, while it's like, you could probably make the argument that he won that fight, but it's like, he's got, like, the MMA gods against him. I One agree. One fact about Terry and Ware, he trains with our boy Marcus Kowal in true, Systems yeah. Training Center, so shout out to you, Marcus. Very cool. And, and Ombet, Ombet, we're sponsored by Ombet. Ombet. Kim, Kim, right. if you're watching this on bet, we're we're actually trying. Okay. So anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, those, those those two. I mean, those those kind of stand out again. And, and I agree with your pick as well. I mean, um, that that Tyson Ma fight with uh, with Des Green, I think, is a, is a real big fight as well. Right. And not only is it you know two talented individuals, but there's some backstory there as well. And, and we got added backstory now with the, with the missed weight today. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's a good selection, and, and the other two I picked out. Those are, those are the ones I'll definitely be focused on. I, I think on. it's interesting too that uh, Marab Devalishvili. Marab. Marab. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go with uh, Matt Sarah. It's like I, I don't give a fuck about your last name. <laughs> <laughs> You're Marab to me, bro. Yeah. I actually I met uh, Matt Sarah on the way uh, when I was gonna go get. Uh... Shit, I really wanted to like you know get my mouth full with Matt Sarah. I know, I know. I I actually told him like, hey, if you're looking what? for a blowjob tonight, I know a guy. I know a guy. Wait, have you seen his lips? <laughs> I know I got the like grandpa hair, but have you seen the lips? Yeah, though? he's got the he's got the lips of a fourteen year old girl. Okay. Uh... <laughs> 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 you know what that means. And anyway, uh, so I, I, I talked to him just a little bit, just like I was, okay, admittedly, because I'm a fucking asshole, I was standing shadow boxing waiting for the, for the elevator, and then I just hear some, <laughs> and I just hear someone like, yeah, man, looking good, and I'm like, oh shit, that's Matt Sarah, and I turn oh. around, and like, Matt Sarah's there, I'm like, hey, man, what's up? Um, and he didn't remember me uh, at first, and or he didn't remember me at all, to be honest, because uh, let's face it, which one of those people do? But, uh, yeah, uh, so we started talking a little bit, and it was like, "Yeah, Marabo, yeah, he's kind of, you know, he's, um, he's he's pretty high on." Oh, on very that. high. Yep. And uh, I mean, I, th I think that's a fun fight. Uh, I gotta say about Peter Jan, mm. uh, admittedly, he's getting a, a sacrificial lamb to the slaughter. Yeah. Uh, I feel sorry for Jin Su's son. Sorry, son, but <laughs> this is a tough, tough fight for you. Uh, let's face it, Peter Jan, uh, he called out um, John Lineker. An exclusive to MMO Uh I say that's a good fucking fight. I say let's get that fight going because I, f I see this being like football violence. That would be fun. You know? That would be a great fight. I mean, listen, uh, you never want to look past anybody in the UFC. Stranger things have happened. I mean, Matt Serra is a perfect example mm -hmm. of the things that can happen in the sport. So, uh, yeah, I get it. But, uh, but yeah, Peter Jan, uh, there's, there's a reason why people are, are, are as high on him as they are. And, uh, you know, it looks like this is, as you say, kind of a – Kind of a sacrificial lamb, yeah. But him and Lineker would be so would in be that phenomenal. sense. And in that sense, like I'm, I'm, 
I'm very excited to see Peter Yawn like completely demolish this poor guy. But in terms of like actual fight, I'm pretty interested in Jordan Johnson versus Adam Adam Yandia because mm. we've got two undefeated fighters. Yandiam coming in from one of those autonomous uh, regions uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with fidget spinner on the flag. All right. <laughs> Uh, and uh, nine, well, eight and zero or nine and zero. Every single fight finished in the first round. Right. Damn. Hardcore. Uh, I've seen some of his fights, and I mean, like I said, I mean, he, I mean, it's not. He compensates for technique with being a fucking bulldozer. Uh, I mean, he's. It's not the most glamorous. It's not the most technical. But he gets the job done, and he makes guys quit. That's so, gonna be one to watch for sure. Can uh, we go back to uh, Peter Yan and uh, Jin Su Sun for a while? Um, the Korean dude, Jin Soo Sun, he's huge. He's so much bigger than Peter Yan. I mean, he mm -hmm. missed weight, but I mean, he, he's taller. He's uh, like more buff, so it's gonna be an interesting fight. But I'm I'm also excited just to see all these uh, new Russians. According to Dan Hardy, like in a couple of years, we're gonna have like Russian champions in the, in basically every division. So it's gonna be interesting to see at least one or two, or maybe three future stars on this card. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I mean. Uh, we can always go back to the second UFC event in Sweden where Conor McGregor made his debut. And it's like, let's face it, that card was uh, Ilder Latifi versus um, Gegard Mousasi on short notice. Nobody expected anything really to come out of that card. I think the co main event was Ross Pearson against Ryan Couture. Uh, let's face it, not necessarily top notch stuff, but we got to see the day, we got to see a star get born. And who knows? I mean, maybe Adam Yandiev, maybe. Maybe this will be. Uh, yeah, I mean, think about that in retrospect. I mean, Gegard's the guy that's gone, and Ilir yeah. is the Ilir, the you know the. I, I, I remember, I remember Dana White tweeted, and he spelled his last name Latifa. Yeah, yeah Latifa. Right? <laughs> you know, he spelled, Did he spell both his names wrong. I think. Didn't spell, spell like Ilir Latifa. I don't. Like I remember that? Latifa. I don't know if you got yeah. the first. But now, I mean, so now you're so you're talking about Dana not even getting the name right, and now he's the guy that's still hanging around being a contender, and, and Gegard's the one that's moved on. So Top five, yeah, man, right? you never you never know. You never know. I mean, look, it, to me, I get it, man. If if you just barely care about MMA or you're just a casual fan, you only want the biggest names. But this is the stuff that the I don't know hardcore fans like me. I think we live for is like watching these up and comers. Who's who's the new guy? I got to keep an eye on. Who's got to watch out? So um, yeah, I mean, listen. To me, this event is really, as you said from the beginning, it's all about the debut in Russia. It's all about the UFC starting a presence in Russia. That's yeah. what this is about. And, and I think it's, as you said, it's historic. But there are going to be opportunities for these new fighters to make a name for themselves. And, and that'll be fun to watch to see if anybody steps up on the platform. Quick shout out too, to uh, Khalid. Fucking. I mean, Murtazaliev the... versus C.B. Dalloway. C.B. Dalloway has gone through more opponent changes than I think John Morgan's gone through uh, the cholesterol checks with yes, the doctor. Yeah. Uh, this should be a fun one. Uh, C.B. Dalloway can't fucking catch a break. He's getting like t tougher and tougher he competition. He can't even catch a break in the elevator, man. What do you mean? Mm. Remember he was in the <laughs> elevator accident when the, oh, the old yeah. ass uh, elevator just crashed like two floors or whatever and his back got fucked up and shit. That's true. Is that why you're terrified of elevators? You know we live on the eighth floor and he refuses to take the elevator. I mean, Russia, I love you, but I do not trust your elevators, especially in like a fucking building that was built in the 18th century. So fuck you and fuck your elevators. Wow. No, not fuck you. Fuck your elevators. <laughs> So he's gonna have like a fucking uh, like. Uh, but that's why I got like. By the time get I, what, what? I already have a badonka donka. That's yeah, what it, it could get juicier. It I mean, could get juicier. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's you a, hear about Putin? You hear that talking about a, his ass? It's a brown belt ass though, so it's pretty good. I'm, yeah. I'm happy. It's true. It is pretty tight. Uh, uh, but so a quick shout out for the main event of the undercard. Um, now to the let's get to the breakdown though. Uh, main, the main card, we got four fights. Uh, in my opinion, pretty close fights. Uh, pretty hard to pick fights. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I just interrupt you? Uh, there's no. Some, there, there's something wrong with your drink. It still has uh, a liquid in it. Ooh. Fair enough, fair enough. Called out. What kind of a host are you? You have to set who, the tone. Who doesn't well, drink? I'm like here, uh, the newcomer is setting the tone. Although with the girl drinks, but at least I'm like, I'm... I'm trying. Who doesn't well, drink the premium vodka? Yeah, I mean, I... Well, I put... L let me put it this way. I put the hoe in host. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, that's the way I run this show. Uh, <laughs> awkward silence. So, we got a main... We got a main card. And we got... 
first out, we got kind of a... I mean, I, I wouldn't say do or die necessarily. I can't even fucking open my phone. Chinese fucking shit. All right. Alexei Kunchenko versus Tiago Alves. Uh, actually, before we get to the breakdown, let's just get a quick refill on our drinks. And uh, I think one Cross, of these... Yeah. yeah, maybe some shots. One of these two probably has someone to jerk off. So let's take a quick pause, and then we'll get to the main card breakdown. Mm, that's an 8% beer, by the way. The sweetest? Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. I hope it's better than this fucking... Uh, I mean, this is what we used to serve. I used to work in the kindergarten. This is what we fucking serve them in the morning. What the fuck is this? this is, it's no surprise that he worked at a kindergarten where most of the kids grew up to be drug dealers, but yeah. Uh, either yeah, way, where do you think I get my weed from? Well, I mean, that's you have, you have definitely to... not the direction I thought you were going in with that joke, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, I like it. I, I like that for, for once, I did not take the sexual pedophile route with my jokes. But uh, well, that's I'm, too easy. Look at me. I'm like a. It's a sign of maturity. Pedophile. It's a sign of maturity. Yeah, that's true. He is like a walking pedophile. Uh, so anyway, uh, Alexei Kunchenko making his UFC debut against Tiago Alves. We got a real veteran here. Uh, Former title challenger. Tits for days. Tits for days. You hear about Putin? Fuck, have you seen Tiago Alves' abs? Tiago Absvels. Right? Right? Horrible. Am I right? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> now, listen, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued in this fight. Uh, Tiago... Uh, is certainly a guy that we all know, right? I mean, he's been around forever. You know, we, we he, he's you know fought for a title years and years and years ago. Well, you know, we were, think of his tits? we were talking about UFC 100 earlier. I mean, how crazy is that? You know, uh, but you know, it's crazy because I you know I've been covering him forever, been interviewing him forever, been talking to him forever, and I really do honestly feel like mentally he's in a better place than he's yeah. ever been. You know what I mean? Like he's he's at peace, he's happy, he's he's positive, man. Everything's in a good mindset. But he hasn't gotten the results that he wanted lately, right? So I was a little shocked when this matchup was announced, to be honest with you, because um, – and I asked him earlier this week, I was like, do you, do you feel like, you, you know, this is like Brazilian Rocky or something, you know what I mean? Like you're traveling to, to Moscow to, to, to face this uh, undefeated, you know, badass, uh, the local guy. And he was like, nah, man, you know, I, I watch the guy fight. I see holes, you know, I see opportunities. And it's like – Oh, okay, and, and, and that's sure the about that? I, I mean that's the attitude you gotta have. I got that's why I respect it, man. I respect it, but uh, it's just a tough spot for Tiago Alves, man. I, I believe you know that he's the underdog here for a reason, um, and it's weird to think about that. But that's I mean that's what this game is about, right? Is ushering in the new blood. You know, Kunchenko is like, or uh, Alves is like five times the money. It's insane, man. It, it, I, I didn't realize it was that big. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, it is that way on Ombet anyway. On bet. On bet. The, 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 on bet, the world's on leading bet. MMA side for, for, or I don't know, fucking something. Tell him to cut a brother a check over here. I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 on bet. <laughs> I mean, if we get on bet shout outs on like the MM, uh, the road show mm. and all that, oh, there's going to be a check coming your okay. way. Hell yeah. We got, yeah, we got deals on to talk. On not paying that check. I'm paying it. That's I'm what's up. That's what's so, up. To every girl out there, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so many girls watching this. <laughs> there's about as many girls watching this as our fucking Dagestani champions, okay? Uh, so anyway. Uh, tough spot. It is a tough spot. spot. It's really interesting. Spot. I, I mean, listen. Um, Tiago House is not going to be intimidated by the moment. You know what I mean? So that's no, important. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's, that's he's it. He's not going to be out of his element. He's not going to be, you know, he's going to be, his mindset's going to be there physically, mentally. Everything's going to be there. Um, but this is still a tough assignment, no question about it. So, um, you know, it's, it's weird. Uh, you, you don't say you, like, cheer for guys because you don't. But, man, you, when you see, you know, when we've talked to these people, you know, like the other night in Dallas, like seeing Jim Miller get a big win, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that me, was being awesome. the first one uh, to 30, 30 fights. fights yeah. you know? Same thing with, like, Diego Sanchez, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's, you know, seeing those guys get wins, it's fun because you're like, to, man, to see fair, the That was also the world's most, like, retarded game plan and tactics and technique from Craig White. Yeah, yeah he did. He, he, it wasn't good. I mean, his fucking takedown defense and grappling was like fucking Stefan's interview technique. I mean, it's wow, just, fucking just don't, harsh. Don't uh, so, yeah, I, listen, I think Conchico's the right pick here. Um, I'd love to see Tiago win. I do think he, he's a live underdog, and the fact that he definitely has talent. He does, as I said, mentally, I think he's in a better place, but it's tough, man. It's yeah, tough. but I feel like uh, happy and 
focus Tiago Alves is a dangerous motherfucker. It's like pound for pound one of the fucking best leg kicks in the game and again pound for pound the best tits in the game man or woman so i mean it's just uh that makes for a dangerous concoction you know the kgb knocking on the door oh shit all right well we don't even have our dicks out yet so they're not yeah we're We're getting there by by the time we get to the main event we will probably be in in a full-on gangbang but uh uh all right let's get to our picks then i mean i I gotta say that first of all uh kunchenko is a guy that i had my eye on for a while uh and that Asha had Kunchenko's balls in his mouth yes, for right. a long time. And Mamon, it's Asha had, had definitely had his balls in his mouth for a long time. Uh, was hyping him up. Uh, this dude's a killer. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, not necessarily faced UFC level experience, but the thing is, like, we know so little about so many of these guys. For all we know, he beat five Khabibs. That's yeah. what that's what's so hard to me about handicapping the people that come out of this region. You know what yeah. I mean? Because we don't see a lot of the fights. You know, it's 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 just not. It's not present, so they build up these records, you know, and maybe they're facing other killers, maybe they're facing scrubs to help them build them, and we don't really necessarily know. So um, that's what's interesting about these tests. You know, you get to see them. They're, they're going to prove it one way or the other. Either they're the real deal or they're not, and we're going to find out. All right, well, let's get to our picks then. Uh, we will let Mr. Rumaga start out with his pick, Tiago Alex, Alexi Konchenko. We know what your dick is choosing, but what is your mind choosing? The problem is my, my dick is bigger is than my mind. Mi- no, no, it's bigger than my mind. All right, so I don't know if that's a compliment to my dick or uh, the opposite of a compliment <laughs> to my mind, but let's roll. Uh, I'll it go depends on the size of your dick, I guess. So oh, I guess we're no. all disappointed. Yes. Yeah, I mean, his mom was, so, I mean, that's exactly. it uh, And she's not easily disappointed, trust me. Jesus. Um, what are we doing I, I have to go with uh, my boy, uh, Tiago Alves. Uh, I don't know. I, I sad, I'm i sad to say that I, I haven't watched many of Kunchenko's fights. Actually, zero of them. Uh, As a true journalist. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not, I'm not a journalist. I, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, uh, there's a reason he's behind the camera most of the time. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, for some reason, I feel like uh, tomorrow night, Tiago is going to put it all together, and he's going to come out come out from uh, UFC Moscow, uh, knocking on the door to being, like, a top contender. He's still, I think, young enough to make a run, maybe not a he? title run. but he's still, like, 34. Yeah, so I mean That's he's crazy. old-ish, but, but it's the welterweight division. No, that's a... I mean I'm not gonna say he's gonna make a no, run for the title. No, but 34 is to me 34. Well, I mean I'm 40, so to me 34 is young. But you are right, facing killers in the UFC welterweight division. Is tough. Yeah, I mean he, he can uh, make a run uh, for the top. I mean he's he's not ranked right now, right? No, he can't be. Yeah, so I mean. Uh, within the year, I think he's going to be ranked. Uh, his whole problem is he's not. There's no consistency in fighting, and I think the more consistent, the more consistently he fights, he's going to do better. So, yeah, the, my, my pick's going to be Tiago Alves. Look out for the leg kicks and uh, leg kicks and the jab. By the way, I've got UFC.com open over here to pull up the card. Uh, just shout out to anybody from USC.com watching, because I know that they, I mean, oh, yeah, you, you told Gavin, me they're all. Gavin, Gavin what are you fucking tra- doing? You see with what I'm saying? Bro? Uh, they should add age. They should add age on there. They have they a lot of age. stats. They don't have age. They got, they got country, record, KO, sub percentage, height, weight, reach. They've even had leg reach, which I like. I love the leg reach. They don't have age on there. They should add age. I'm sorry, but decision percentage tells me. Like, I, yeah. I could give so fucking much. I think they, need, they should have age in there because I was trying to double check. Cause I think Tiago's there. I think he's 34. But I was trying to check on UFC. All right, well, let me just say that. I mean, I think Konchenko is going to fuck Alvis up more than Usada did. Uh, I think. Hey, what are you, what are you implying, man? <laughs> what are you implying? Don't. Nah, I, oh, dude, don't, don't shit on my boy. Th- that, was a good, that was a good joke. But uh, to be I mean, I'm not going to speculate too much. Uh, I, I, I'm just saying that. I think Tiago Alves' best days kind of are behind him. I was also a big fan going in. Uh, if I recall correctly, I even think I was rooting against GSP in the UFC 100. I, was uh, rooting yeah. I love GSP, but for sure I was, I think, I was rooting for Tiago. I think a lot of people were, yeah. That yeah. was kind of the height of his rise. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, I, I, I look. I'm, I'm kind of, thinking Kinchenko, like second I'm, round TKO. I'm, uh, 
if if I had to say my, my heart, you know, my heart is with Tiago Alves. I'd love to see Tiago yeah. win this fight. Hell yeah. But uh, you know, gun to the head, I gotta make a pick. You know, I'd probably pick Kachingo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm guessing the hype is uh, justified, like because uh, there's a lot of hype with this yes. uh, Kunchenko guy, and his open workout was really nice. Like his whole, it's just he's so fucking technical. So he's it, fluid. Yeah. He just goes switches between techniques in a way it's just like fucking sexy, like just the way his muscles move. And you, you hear about Putin? We're talking gay shit. Um. Next up in the heavyweight division, a fight no one was asking for, uh, especially us because we're trying to figure out who is a hometown fighter here. Uh, Andre Arlovsky versus Shamil Abdurakimov. Um, and which media does he respect? That's, yeah, that's which, uh, this week's most important question. Which media does Andre Arlovsky respect? Yeah, because... Uh, I, Every time, every fucking time I meet Andre Arlovsky, I'm so fucking afraid he's gonna break my nose and make it look like his, uh, which he, I am so I mean, afraid of. I mean, he has to have pound for pound the worst nose in the game. Uh, Brad Pickett. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I've never seen Brad Pickett in real life, it's but bad. like when I was looking at Andre's nose, I'm like, Jesus, that's just the most crooked shit it's I've like, ever it's seen. Like a half moon, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, here's your nose. Nope, it's over here. It's, it's like, like ISIS could use his nose as a flag or something. Yeah. <laughs> what do you about one, John? Does, doesn't make any sense, but I'll say yes. I'll say yes to that. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, yeah, you know, listen, you, I mean, you and I talked about this on, on the MMA Road Show, is that uh, it is we. I, I do find the booking weird. Um, yeah. You know, Arlovsky is uh, from Belarus. Uh, his mom is Russian, um, you know, I, Belarus, I, again, it's, and now we're getting into these complicated politics and things, yeah. was a part of the Soviet Union at one point, you know, is not a part of Russia, uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's one of these kind of bizarre things, um, yeah, and so, so for them to be... the last dictatorship in Europe. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that, so, so here he is, and now he's fighting a Russian... <laughs> hey, hey, right, Putin? Hey. We're putting you on. <laughs> So I hope you're not rushing over here with your KGB. Oh, my God. <laughs> so ridiculous. Maybe uh, the traffic will keep stalling you. So ridiculous. <laughs> uh, no, but it's weird. I mean, you know, Ar Arlovsky is definitely a legend. I mean, he's you know, you know a former champion, but also yeah. at one point he was the biggest superstar in the sport. You know, I, I mean, I, I can remember, you know, back in the, you know, 10 years ago when, when people, you know, they, they didn't even know his name. They were like, what the, that guy with the fangs? Like, yeah. I love that. You know what I mean? Like, like he my was... best chick friend, she's like, doesn't know anything about MMA, but she remembers fucking Andre Arlovsky. He's like, yeah. oh, that guy Arlovsky with, with, a, with the fangs. That's it. And so, like, like, she remembers him and Tito Ortiz. So I feel <laughs> weird. And, and I asked him about it, and he was, he was like, ah, I'm not worried about it. And I get it. And, but it does feel weird to me that they put him up against a Russian. Now, uh, you know, I. To be honest with you, I hadn't thought a lot about it until this week, you know, but, but I was, you know, I was getting, you know, when they announced the card, I was like, okay, yeah, no, nah, no big let's deal. Let's address this fact that they changed it now, or I think they changed it now, they but, it, yeah, they it. okay, but before it said Russia country, versus Russia, Russia. you Russia mentioned Russia, that. Yeah. I hadn't seen that. Um, it uh, is funny to me. Do you want to see it? So then you can go to the MMA Knit uh, podcast and you will see it on screen. It you you got a Russia. screen cap of it. Good call. So we're, we're, we're plugging shit more than uh, than, uh, than uh, uh, no, 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 so, yeah. the MMA net. Uh, than John Morgan and fucking everything ever. <laughs> so ridiculous. We're plugging more shit than John is using the plugs himself. So wow. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, not that my train of thought has been thrown off at all at this no. point. Uh, but no, you know, it, you know, I, I, when the matchup was first announced, I mean, I, it just didn't really dawn on me. I guess like, well, that's weird. And then when I started getting ready and put my notes together, and kind of was like, oh shit, like that. That's weird, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you give Andre Arlovsky the quote-unquote local rub? You know what I mean? Like, I know he's not the local in 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 you know exact you know boundary and geography, but he's the guy from around here. You know what I mean? And, and again, he said his, his you know, mom it has links. Me of, it reminds me of Martin Svensson versus David Tamer. Right. Yeah. Where it was like it was two Swedes, and I was like, okay, admittedly, Svensson and myself are from the south, which nobody watching this show has ever heard before but i'm from fucking the south but uh it was one of those like ah what, why are you putting two like swedes up against each other like, yep. you know, 
Come on, that doesn't just that seems doesn't... weird. I thought they could find, I mean they can't find an American or Brazilian or somebody for him to go against. So I don't know. I, I find the booking a little bit weird. Um, I'm I'm definitely pulling for Arlovski. I, I like Arlovski. You're right. Arlovski is uh, one of the most intimidating dudes. If you've ever been around, him. he's intimidating. Yet for whatever reason, we have like this like pretty good relationship. He was pointing at you the yeah. entire way. In. Literally every day this week, he's done this. He's if you if you go back and watch, it's ridiculous. Go back and watch. The uh, open workouts. Well, make go, sure you do it on the MMA. Do, yeah, page. do that. Go, go watch ahead. the open workouts. Go watch the, the, the official weigh-ins. Watch the ceremony. Literally, and, and just go uh, go hang out in the lobby here. Literally, every time he's seen me this week, he just goes, and, and he rubs his belly and points at me. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I got you, dog. I need to lose some weight. Okay, I got it. All right, I, I, I feel that you. Is that what it is? Yeah. I, was like, I thought he was like, oh, hey, look at my ass. Yeah, I no. I'm like, yeah, he's but, like, but you had him. <laughs> Ever. Hey, John, you want some of this? No, he's like, you know belly. what Andre Arlovsky needs? He needs to grow. A nose job? Uh, except that he needs to grow his hair out. He needs to go back to the, go old, back to the old Andre look? Arlovsky. Because I remember, like, me and my friend, like, we were so excited for Arlovsky because he, he just looked like a fucking pit bull. He, uh, for me, he's the original and he's Pitbull, big. right? And I think, too, I think... Well, uh, he is, though. I, mean, I think until you... I the name Pitbull before uh, him. Uh, him. Legend. But I, I think... Uh, and I think it's always... Uh, until you, like, and maybe it's just me, but, like, you kind of forget how big he is until you stand next to him. Like, yeah. he is a huge dude, man. You know what I mean? So, I, I don't know. Listen, I, I, I'm pulling man. for him in this fight. I, I'm, I'm pulling for him in this fight. I always pull for Andre. Like, he's he's got... Like I said, we've got this funny relationship. I mean, he likes to mess with me and it's and it's great man and i enjoy because it. it's funny because he's such an intimidating dude but then for whatever reason he's just taking a liking to like messing with me and and it's and it's cool you know what i mean that's, it's fun that's what's so funny because like you know, I, I, because I, 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 legends I, recognize legends that's what's up that's what's you're up you're not supposed to compliment each other on this show what the i'm fuck? sorry i'm, I'm new <laughs> to this shit all right. Uh, all right so first and last time you saw stefan on here uh, so, <laughs> anyway, so anyway I mean, every I'll, single. I'll make it up to you. I'll make it up to you. Every single time I've ever talked to Andre Arlovsky, I've been a little bit afraid. I, I'll never forget the time where me and Abby, where I think it was Hamburg when he was fighting uh, Josh Barnett, and we get into the elevator. We're going up, and then Andre steps in, and uh, we're just like, "Hey, what's up, Andre?" And he's just like, "I don't even think he said Duh. anything." <laughs> Duh. I don't even think he's. I, I, I just think he's kind of nod his head. And he stood there and he didn't say a word, and I was just so fucking nervous. Well, and I was so fucking bro, nervous. Bro, dude, when, when he's on edge, man, he's intimidating. And he was. He's been mad all week. He was on edge this week. Uh, you guys saw that club show. You know, if, if you're watching this, I'm imagining you're slightly hardcore of an MMA fan. Yeah. Uh, or, right, or just have, on the air. I know or, you're watching this, huh? Or just have nothing else to do. But, uh, yeah, you know, he walked out on that Russian TV show where. Um, you know, they showed his knockout yeah, over and over, yeah, and, yeah, and, and I guess, over, yeah. and you know, he was frustrated about that. Um, and so he walked down the show. So all week long, he's been a little bit standoffish. Uh, he's been standoffish with the media, especially the Russian media, which is kind of what you guys were alluding to. You're like, you know, who does yeah. he respect and whatever. Like, he was definitely concerned with who he was talking to and who he wanted to talk to. So he's been especially on edge this week, but yet, despite being on edge, has still found the uh, the comedy to uh, to mess with me. Well, it's it's been a lot. How much? Seventeen. Time? 17. All right. Let's just. <laughs> wait, wait. All right. We're producing we're on the fly. We're skipping the illusion of fuck it. Yeah, the, the battery has twenty five <laughs> minutes, so uh, yeah. Uh, we're not actually taking beer breaks, but beer is right over there uh, because we're uh, we're doing way too few shots. I think. I mean, we. You already drink the whole oh, vodka. Shit. Okay, I'll, I'll do the rest. Deal. You still haven't finished that one? No, oh, I'm pacing myself. Dude, well, fuck you. What? <laughs> Who paces themselves in M- M- MMO and it's school? Yeah, it literally... Cannot. I'm just joking. Cheers. I've been talking a lot, so I... I, I uh... You gotta put something okay. else in your mouth. Sir. Sir, I don't can, know what can you're you doing. Can you put like uh, two, two something else can, in your mouth? Yeah, how many things could he put in your mouth? Right, Putin? Right? Right? Hey, bro, um, don't, don't poke the bear. I'm, un- but I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, man. Has poke Hashtag the bear me too, bro. ever been more appropriate than poke the right bear. fucking now? <laughs> poke <laughs> the bear. I'm actually wondering, like, if we uploaded this on YouTube, like, how, how far could we go in Russia? Like, with gay jerks and shit like that, before, like, we actually get into trouble. Let's just not uh, put hashtag Vladimir Putin. I think we'll be fine. Probably, yeah. yeah check. Because 
ain't no fucking way that Putin even knows this event is going on. Can you on. guys wait to upload this until after I leave on, <laughs> on Monday? That'd be great. So, so I, my flight is uh, 5.30 a.m. on Monday. That, so if you could uh, so if just wait until then. In fact, in fact, let's let's do the first ever he's, uh, he's pre-fight, fly- post-fight show. Let's <laughs> let's talk about what may have happened. Yeah, Heathrow. <laughs> oh, fuck, you poisoned the guy in London, didn't you? Let's, right. L- Litvinenko. I, Litvinenko, yeah. Mr. Putin, you are a fine uh, gentleman. I... I I believe you are a practitioner of the martial arts. Yeah, he's uh, a black belt in judo, A right? huge supporter of uh, Fedor Emelianenko for a long also time. Also a huge supporter of murdering uh, opponents. The Swedish people, I have nothing to do with them. Obviously, uh, as an American myself, we don't have connections with these lower types of countries yeah, such as Ameri- this. Because America is totally fucking wait, best wait friend. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ain't no higher ranking than fucking Swedish people. Come on, bro. What are you talking about? I, uh, ranking? Sweden. I mean, Mr. We, Putin, we they, they... Everyone fuck us in the ass. Uh, Come on. <laughs> everyone. M- Mr. Putin, they, they, they have their opinions. Fucking everyone. I, I do not necessarily support these opinions at John all. John Morgan does not condone <laughs> Sweden. That, that's what I heard. So let's see what happens when John Morgan comes to Sweden next. Yeah, I'm hoping people will fucking trash his Twitter Rinkeby, now. Rinkeby, what Rinkeby. Set his, set his car on fire. I didn't, that's not very nice. Well, yes, not. We actually do like you on this show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to make up for it. I gave you that compliment yeah, earlier. So All right, fair play. It's even it. out now. So it's even ring, out now. Thank you. Be. Yeah, this is it. set his car on fire or his shorts. The most short-wearing motherfucker ever. What's bigger, ever. though? His shorts or the car? Wow. Yes. I don't know. That's a good question. It's, I I can't. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it hurts my heart to like this John Morgan because... Um, just because I don't uh, no more compliments. Just <laughs> yeah, because. no more compliments. No more compliments. Uh, I'm, that's I'm, not, uh, that's uh, not how this show works. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so anyway, oh fuck, we were talking about a fight, right? <laughs> or we're ta- we're, we're, you, we're, still, we're you still haven't picked between Andre and Shamil. Oh, you, you picked Andre. Andre. I'm picking Andre. Well, listen. So emotionally, I'm definitely again kind of like I was saying emotionally for well, Tiago. Emotionally, yeah. But, we but know you know who you jerk off. But to, the but actual. Who are you picking? But I'm actually picking Andre as well. Like I really, I am picking Andre. Uh, and I will say this because so while you're betting money, you're also drifting. It scares. Off it. it scares. Okay. I don't. I well. I, I don't. I will say this. It is funny, but I don't bet on fights. Uh, I feel like it, if you have money on really? fights, it, yeah, it make. It, I feel like it makes you look at the fights differently. I really do. Uh, I, can, so, can I ask something? Sure. You're not even gonna bet on. Uh, uh, Alexei Olenek uh, finishing Mark Hunt by Ezekiel Choke <laughs> eight times the money on on bet. I. No. Can somebody tell we've been given some directives during, <laughs> <laughs> during five weeks? Uh, like I said, I mean, if uh, Ombet wants to cut some checks, I'll, I'll talk about them all day. But I listen, I personally don't bet uh, just because – but, but, but that's what's interesting about it, right? which is why I think fans should bet on it. Like, even if you bet, like, a dollar – it just makes it so fun when you have like vested yeah. in it. You're like, that's my guy. Like, you're not, you're no longer just watching a fight. You're like, that's my dude. You know, I'm supporting him. But that's why I won't because I'll be honest with you. Like, I, like, I, I see my money and I'm like, I was like, that was a close round. My dude definitely won. You know what I mean? Right, so, yeah, like, yeah. so I don't know. But anyway, all that aside, um, listen, uh, emotionally, yeah, man, I want to see uh, Andre do well, man. I, I like the guy a lot. And, and he is a legend of the sport, man. And I know we throw that term out there a lot, but to me, he is a legend. Uh, but I will say this. I do get scared when he's in there with heavy hitters. But, man, dude goes 15 minutes with Tai Tuivasa. Shamil is not coming out with, with, with Tai Tuivasa's strength. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like, um, you know, Shamil is, 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 uh, is, is, is a good matchup for Andre, man. I really do. So, I, I do, I, you know, I don't know how much longer Andre has in the tank. He told me this week, he's like, dude, I think I got another four or five years left in me, man. And, uh, you know, it, 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 and maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But um, I believe he can win this fight. I really do. I, lo- I love to hear that because I love Andre Alovsky. And the only thing for me that's scarier than uh, Andre Alovsky in person is uh, those whatever it was, two, three minutes where he was fucking up Fedor in Affliction. Yeah. That was some mm. scary shit. And he was like, you know what, let's go for a flying knee while my hands are like probably like fingers in the ass or something. And then, okay, yeah, you got knocked the fuck out. So, yeah, fuck, yeah, I'm for sure I'm going with Andre Alves too because if I'm honest, Shamil, he, uh, I'm not going to say he sucks, but he sucks. He's yeah, not. So what, what, what's, I mean, what's his, what's his strength? Definitely it's not his hair. 
Well, maybe his his body hair is probably his strength, right? Well, yeah, he does have more hair on his chest than he does anywhere else. So, I mean, that's a good point. He does have an impressive chest hair game. If that is an actual game that people play. What if he? What What if he? Uh, what if he came out with a hero? Uh, <laughs> like Brian Epperson. Yeah, would that would that do it for I you? Would love you, that. Would you change? Would you change your mind if he came out with a hero? I would. You're like, bro, you know what? You got game you now. Got and me. that's just that's such a small commitment for so much like entertainment value. That's have a strong chest hair game. Didn't uh, didn't Sam Alvey do that too? No, no, it was just Brian Abersall, and he had an arrow pointing. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. yeah he's Al pointing, Alvey always does like the, the smile in the back of the head, you know, uh, and that yeah. sort of thing. But uh, I, love I like Sam Alvey. I love oh, Sam he's great. Alvey. I want that guy and to come. I, don't know, I mean, I want a I want a fucking cook dinner for Sam Alvey and his wife. All right, his wife is gorgeous. I mean, uh, Sam Alvey, I'm sorry, I love you, but <laughs> goddamn, your wife is gorgeous. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty much anything. That part out. Is there anything we're not allowed to say on the show? No, not really. Yeah, yeah. Fuck we Putin. made fucking. Yeah, we made fucking Putin jokes, pedophile jokes. There, there's not a whole lot left. Uh, I think the only thing missing is Holocaust jokes, and I'm not really ready to <laughs> go over yet. I'm Too not, soon. Yeah, Too I'm, soon. Not, I'm not really ready. Uh, I'm Too also soon. leaning towards our last game is fight. Either way. Nice. I, I feel. Well, yeah, school, everybody. Uh, did we say? Do we, do we know what the? Did you look at the odds on this one? Do we? Know? Let's check it out. Oh. Let's check out Ombet, right? Exactly. Let's check out Ombet and see you what the odds are. Coming, my my friend. Yeah, yeah, you're doing. Can you're we take out the odds? Right? Yeah, we can go to ombet.com slash Kim. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, slash we're fucking doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, I mean, hashtag bitter. <laughs> how, how lucky are we that we can say fuck you to our boss? And he's going to be like, I love when you said fuck you to me. I <laughs> yeah. loved it. It was great. Well, right? to be fair, our boss, the first time I saw him, like, or uh, I, I noticed him, was when I saw this YouTube video where he was just opening up his asshole in this compilation of, like, MMA. What? Yeah. Kim? Yeah, Kim. Did he open up his asshole? He opened up his asshole on YouTube, and for some reason, I don't know if it's still there, but it, uh... It, it, should, it would, uh should we add that, like, as a picture, <laughs> picture uh, editing? Can you guys make sure you don't, like, tag me in this video or anything <laughs> like that? Like, I feel like at some point, like, my son is going to, you know, want to see what his dad does for a living, and if you could just make sure that, like, you, yeah, can't, but honestly, you can't find this on a Google search. For MMA nit. I guess if you could... <laughs> Just because if you just don't tag me, I'd be I'd be cool with that. I just we'll wait a couple of years and then we'll tag thank, you. Thank you, thank we, you. We won't tag you today. Thank you. All right, let's see here what the odds are. But uh, if Ownbet wants to, you know, I mean, cut, we'll, do we'll, we'll promote the hell out of Ownbet oh, in the United uh, States. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I would not say no to, I mean, to a higher uh, paycheck. Sure, I'm I'm paid by Ownbet, but I, they got some fucking. Good I will. I, well, they, I mean, listen. Really I will. I will. I will right, be a whore. It's. I'm fine. Okay. First of all, <laughs> uh, we got Tiago Alves five point twenty five times the money. Mm -hmm. Wait. Can I just? Uh, I said squall and look at my glass. Mm -hmm. I didn't fucking even drink it. Oh my you god! You fucking, fucking pussy. John Morgan level of drinking. You mm -hmm. fucking chump. I called Kelvin Gastelum a chump yesterday. And Joanna got upset. She called, yeah, she, she called you out on yeah, it. Yeah, she. Yeah, we were at partying with fucking Kelvin Gastelum, Joanna, John Jacic, and Paul Felder. I was, not, I was not there. And we didn't make a video for Panny. We fucking sucked. Shout out to Panny Kiansa. I was, Honestly, not, I was, not I there. was so fucking embarrassingly yeah, he drunk. He was falling though. asleep in the bar. I didn't see That's it right. because I didn't I was... remember anything after like twelve o'clock, but. Yeah. Allegedly, he was falling asleep. I was at a bar. different bar. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Let's take a drink break. Uh, slash battery break. Slash battery break. Uh, Shit. That means you, Stefan. Am I, am, am battery. I a battery? You're a battery boy. You're like a water boy. 27 minutes. Okay, so Stefan just finished masturbating to Tiago Alba's pictures. <laughs> Uh, Why do I, I do don't know this if... show? <laughs> what? You, got, the, you know what's so sad is that like this show is time? this show is ridiculous. Like it's ridiculous. I, I'm a professional. You are. You know what I mean? You're fucking. But the problem is lingerie fighting champion. You guys like, know my weakness. You're like you're like hey, uh, bro. Would you uh would you want to come hang out if we buy all the drinks? And I'm like, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. It's sad. 
You guys well, know me too you're well. Just as much of a professional as they are an alcoholic. <laughs> it makes it easy for us to get you on here. Sir, I'm not an alcoholic. Alcoholics are quitters. <laughs> hey. ah! I like that. <laughs> All right. So uh, you made your pick, Andre Arlovsky. Yeah. Uh, I also pick Andre Arlovsky. Uh, I think maybe decision, perhaps late TKO. Um, I think probably decision. I think you're right. I mean, you could get a late TKO, but I I, I do think probably decision. I mean, Abdur Akimov has been TKO'd before. Yeah, I, I think I mean, he's gonna he's gonna have to if, stick. If, Andre's if, gonna have to stick a move. He's if gonna Timothy have to pull Johnson him. can do it. I feel like Andre Arlovski yeah, probably may, can. Maybe. No offense to Timothy Johnson, but like, come on. It's possible, but I do feel like I feel like uh, Andre, especially in fights like this, he doesn't sit down on his punches as much anymore. You know, he kind of kind of moves around a little bit because he's trying to make sure he doesn't get taken down, doesn't get stuck on his back. And, and so, therefore, like, it's going to be tougher for him to, like, you know, throw full weight into a shot. So, I want to say, uh, what is uh, Shamil good at? What, what is, does Ground he and have... pound? Hmm? I guess. I guess. I mean, I, I just don't see any way that Shamil wins this fight unless... If he gets top like position a... and he puts that... Body hair all in your face. Well, I mean, who would tap out of it's that? It's like a bald competition, and then <laughs> and then Matt Sarah is gonna win anyway. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Well, I mean, he could do a clinch against a cage type of fight. Yeah, little little, little wall install. You know, it yeah. could happen. It could, could happen. easily do that. He no. could easily fucking clinch Arlovsky. Wait, were we talking about Timothy Johnson before yeah. pound for pound? The worst looking MMA fighter that has ever graced the wow. octagon. Jesus Christ. And, wow. and then you fucking even dare to wear the fucking pedophile mustache. The Sir, fuck are you doing, man? That is a strong mustache. And, and how dare you? That is a fantastic it's mustache. It's not even a handlebar mustache. It's just like a pedophile. No, it what is, are you it, doing? It is sir? a phenomenal the mustache. Fuck you. I mean, it's worse than my fucking uh, uh, retired. Uh, Whatever this the, the gray oh, fox yeah. look, <laughs> and it's not even a good gray fox. Look. It's like oh, oh, this guy. I mean, I I don't even commit to the gray fox look. It's just like oh, look at this spotty motherfucker. Yeah, that's the true. Fox. You don't even do a George Clooney thing. So obviously you're picking Arlovsky. Yeah, yeah, I am. But but oh, again, because I don't know like what Shamil's skills is. Other than, um, I guess he has some kind of, I guess he has some high kicks, I feel like. I feel like he's similar to... Can Mark we, like, Shane arrange Kibura? a training session or something where him and Shamil get together and he can you know, find you, out what Shamil's skills are? You, you know what I told uh, Kelvin yesterday? Because Joanna said uh, that Kelvin should beat me up, and I said it would be an honor to get the shit kicked out of me by Kelvin or Joanna or Shamil or Andre or who the fucking hell, because I'm such a fucking big fan of all these... Motherfucker, so I mean, I I would take that brain trauma. Now it's on tape. I would take the brain trauma for these motherfuckers just kicking hey, ass. Hey, full disclosure, I'd fucking take that fight. Me and Shamil, you open way. Open way. Because Shamil ain't yeah. got no skills, bro. He ain't got no skills. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but I'd fucking take that fight. Give me some money. I will because I'm uh, like I'm making, money, I'll take I'm, I'm making my debut. So Shamil. I'm challenging you. There we go. <laughs> so Who the dude. fuck is that guy? Who the <laughs> hey. fuck is Shamil, bro? Here we go. But first he time... doesn't even speak English, so he's never. I mean, maybe he's, he's gonna hear this. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's got gonna the see these ten to pay years the bills. Ago, uh, in ten years in the future. And he's like, oh, I just learned. How are you in English? Oh, okay. Congratulations, bro. Your English is fantastic. Uh, ten years into the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still want Shamil to kick your ass down. I mean, do you want to be the do you want to be the cameraman for totally when he kicks that. my ass? I would totally we'll, do we'll, that. We'll post it on MMA Junkie first. I would totally do that. I would totally do that. Uh, let, let's do it. All right. There's a workout room here, right? So yeah, there is. Yeah, we, there's maps and everything. We, can we do it before the fight? It depends. I mean, it depends on how good you are. I mean, it, shit just got real, so uh, can we just... Uh, can he just kick my ass? Alright, I've got a better match. I've got a better match. Um, I'm gonna break some news here on MMA Net. Oh, shit. I love that. It's the truth. It's the truth. So, I, I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but uh, you guys know Alex Davis, mm -hmm. right? Noted MMA manager, Alex Davis. Um... He actually wants to have a judo match with Ali Abdelaziz. Oh, oh 
snap! <laughs> Main event on Fight Pass, right? I talked to I talked to him about this a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was hey, uh, put me up against any fucking person on Kimura, and I'm fucking. All right, so listen, so Victor, he. Victor, you got just got called out. Victor, yes yeah, sir. Sucker. Fucking. All right, so check, so check this out. So I was talking to Alex about this, and obviously, you know, he he's a rival manager with Ali Abdelaziz, but. They're both judo practitioners. So he wants to do a judo match, and he said, listen, we'll even do, like, modified rules. You know, we can figure it out. Like, whatever will be, you know, the most appealing way to do this. Like, maybe a no time limit. Uh, you, know, or, you know, we'll figure it out. Whatever it means. We'll figure out a way to do this. But he wants to do it, and he wants to do it to, like, raise money for charity. And so I mentioned oh, I wow. have friends uh, in Las Vegas that run uh, Tough Enough which is a, 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 a well-respected amateur promotion there. Some of the best fighters in the world. I mean, Ronda Rousey fought there, Ryan Couture. Uh, you know, it goes, it goes on and on. Um, and I think, and I, and I haven't had a chance to talk to them about it yet because I've been super busy and they've been super busy. They're actually doing a, a pro card this weekend. Um, but they want to make, but I think we can present that. So if you want to do, so if, you, if you've got a map, maybe we, can, maybe we can do some kind of stuff like this. But... How 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 cool would that be? Alex Davis versus Ali Abdelaziz in a judo match. You know, do it in like a cage. You know, make it make it a fun night. Do it in Las Vegas, that tough enough. Fun. It'd be fun, right? And 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 they want that. And, and again, he, he says like, I want the proceeds to go to charity. We'll figure out the best charity for it to go to. You know, for any ticket sales or anything like that. But uh, so yeah, uh, since since uh, since we're talking about weird matchups, that that kind of came into my head. I know we're not like uh, giving compliments on this show, but for me, uh, looking at managers gives so much extra value when I see uh, Ali Abdelaziz like working out with his mm -hmm. uh, mm. with his uh, clientele or whatever. It's um, it just seems like the fucking coolest guy ever. If you're on his good side, at least. If you're on his good side, he seems like the fucking co coolest dude in the world. So it'll be fun, yeah. right? Who wouldn't want to tune into that? Alex da two, two, watch that? Two of the biggest MMA managers in the game right now. Alex Davis, Ali Abdelaziz uh, doing a judo match. Only the hardcore fans will tune in. Shout that, out to any fucking MMA journalist that thought we were fucking bring it. Could we yeah. get some... Uh, do you guys know anybody that could put odds on that for us? Yeah. We, uh, Marche Gronkowski. Yeah. Get the odds, cocksucker. <laughs> you, got, you got a full-time job at Ombet. Oh... H M B E T dot com. You got a fucking full time job. Get the odds for, for this fight. Maybe we can do that. Sock cocker. I'm picking up the Laziz on on just. Oh, Here's just the thing. Because just, he's just, probably like 30 years younger. Just beforehand. Just beforehand. Yeah. They've got, I mean, they, they'll have to find a weight class in between. I think uh, Alex said he could make around like 180 or so. Mm -hmm. If I remember right. I, we, we talked about it. And I did. I, and, and I. I, I couldn't really exactly do so we'll have to find that. So he's definitely the naturally bigger man, but uh, dude, that'd be a, mo a modified judo. Like it's basically a submission only. It's no striking. You know what I mean? Like, dude, I think it'd be awesome. I want to see him do it. So there you go. By the way, that's the first time that's been floated out to the world. Uh, I haven't had a chance to really talk to my friends at Tough Enough whether they'd be interested, but I'm pretty sure they would. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I think sure. all of us like in Vegas, like the fight culture that we have there, we would show up to watch that. But I mean, like, isn't that a perfect fight yeah, to do on oh, well. like International Sorry. Fight Week or something like that? No, yes, no? but only because International Fight Week is so busy. I, it, I'm telling you right now, if those two guys have a judo match, I'm sitting cage side, and I don't want to report on it. I don't want to be working. Shouldn't I want to watch that man. I want to be enjoy it. basketball basketball court side. Joe okay. Rogan, he wants every MMA fight to be on a basketball court. And, oh, you know, that. there's like uh, unlimited right. space for grappling, so oh. you can like drive for a takedown for fucking six miles or something. I didn't hear that, uh, but Joe smokes a lot of weed, and he's a good <laughs> man and a very intelligent man. But that's not gonna happen. But you need you need to get this uh, the hair game on point, bro. Joe, I'm gonna tell you why it won't happen, because you gotta pay. Joe versus somebody has to pay. Game. Hey, somebody has to pay thousand dollars for cage side seats, right? And if it's on a basketball court, you can't charge a thousand dollars all the way up and down the the the, the sidelines. Or, or you know can I mean? you? Mm. I mean, Ombet's gonna pay for me. I mean, as much uh, shout outs I've done to Ombet today, for sure they're gonna pay for my seat and from my uh, lady of the night. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
uh, right after she finishes with Gavin. So there you go. All right. Uh, so Gavin. breaking news on MMA Knit. If uh, that ever happens, the first time I was ever mentioned public was here. So let's, <laughs> there you go. Uh, co-main event: Jan Blachowicz welcomes Nikita Krylov back to the UFC. Uh, in my opinion, a really fucking fun fight. Um, Mr. Rumara, what do you think about this fight? Uh, and who do you have picked as a winner? So I know this Monday when I was on the MMA Knit podcast, I said um, John Blakowicz, but fucking Nikita Krylov, man, he's he's just so good. I mean, he's a contender in the heavyweight division, and he dropped down a weight class to light heavyweight. So Is he a contender, though? Uh, maybe not, but I mean. Jan Blakowicz is a contender, but he's one. Yeah. He's never gonna get the title fight, and if, no one can spell his name. Yeah, and if he against all odds would get the title fight, he's not gonna win. So, uh, I'm gonna go with Nikita Krylov. I'm gonna go with uh, TKO in the third round. I think oh, yeah? it's gonna be a potential fight of the night for sure because Nikita is aggressive. Uh, uh, John Blahovitz is aggressive, so it's gonna be aggressive as fuck, and then it's gonna end in the third round. That's what I think. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm actually leaning more towards uh, Blahovitz in this fight. I, I think that his uh, octagon experience against top tier fight. I mean, as much as I respect Krylov's uh, like win streak that he had in the UFC, let's face it, it was against fighters that like most of us can't name today. Uh, whereas uh, what Tim Johnson? I don't, I, don't know if he, I don't know if he fought Tim Johnson, but he your, probably would your hair him. is terrible. He probably would have beaten him anyway. Okay. Uh, either way, um, I don't know. I, I just feel that, like Blachowicz has had this, he's got this experience and he's got this just style that I think will be a little too tough for, for Krylov. Uh, I think that Krylov, he's got like a lot of stuff to learn still. I think that he's still very young. I feel like He's still got some finesse to work out, whereas I feel that like Blakovich is a little crisper in his technique, a little just more polished in most of his stuff, uh, in basically all angles. Whereas, I mean, I'll, I'll give Nikita Karlov the fact that, uh, okay, sure, he's very unorthodox. He's a little bit more mm-hmm. unexpected in most senses, but I don't think that's going to lead to victory. It's so in- I'm saying Blakovich by decision. It's interesting. Uh, Jan is big, strong, powerful. There's no question about that. Mm-hmm. Like he can he can sleep people. You know what I mean? There's there's Hell no question yeah. about that. But Nikita, first of all, let me say I'm so happy he's back, man. I was so bummed when he left. Uh, can't blame him for leaving. I mean, he said straight up like uh, Fight Nights Global was paying him really good money. And mm-hmm. the other thing he said that was too, and I kind of appreciated the fact that he said this. He's like, listen. I don't feel like I'm famous enough in my own market. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm fighting over here in America and people are watching it, but I don't have enough fame and, and recognition in my own market. And I think that was actually pretty smart. I mean, as, as weird as that may be to say, like, it does make some sense. Like, you, know, you look at people that have a country behind them, a nation behind them, they get paid. You know what I mean? They get respected. And, yeah. and, and he wanted more of that. So I like the fact that he left, but I love the fact that he's back. Um, I'm actually leaning towards Nikita in this one. It yeah. is a dangerous fight, man. You're absolutely right. You're, it's a dangerous fight. Um, he does do some unconventional things, but by doing unconventional things, uh, it opens him up to people, you know, to, to be countered. Um, but the, the big thing for me in this one is speed. Speed kills, right? Mm. And I feel like Nikita, um, man, you know, it's, it's been a while since I've seen him up close, obviously, because he's been gone for like a year and a half or so. But watching him at the open workouts and just being reminded of that speed that he has versus Jan – was powerful, but I feel like he's a little bit more plotting, a little bit more. I think there's going to be, you know, uh, potential for transitions, potential for speed, and uh, because of that, I'm leaning towards uh, towards Nikita, and I'm and I'm glad to have Nikita back. And by the way, I should say, you know, I, I was like Nikita, man, this this win streak that you're on, the 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 career record that you have, like coming back into light heavyweight division, are you thinking about where you might be ranked? And he said. Damn right I am. He's like, you know, there's a couple of big fights right now. You know, Elir has got a big fight. Uh, Anthony Smith has got a big fight. You know, they, they've, they've, they've got a couple of matchups coming up. And he's like, but I, he's like, I believe I'm right there with those dudes. He's like, I believe I'm, I'm, I might be able to, to, to step up and, and have a title shot in one or two fights. And, you know, obviously if John Jones comes back, that changes everything. Yeah. But 
Uh, but it's not out of the question. So, yeah, I think it's a big fight. I, I do think this fight matters. Um, I, I love Nikita, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of just the way he fights. I mean, wh- I think he's, what, 24 fights, never gone to a decision? Like, come on, bro. Like, wow. who, who, who really? you know, yeah. That's who, who, that's, that's That's what's up. Uh, so, yeah, I, I dig it. Uh, Jan's a powerful, strong dude. He can win this fight, but I'm, I'm leaning towards Nikita. All right, you got to drink more. I, I'm trying. You're a well, you guys terrible are alcoholic. You Seriously, have, your reputation does not precede you in that respect. Well, the thing is... You should have bought a bigger bottle of vodka. That's true. I don't know true. why you bought a fucking uh, uh, kindergarten-sized bottle of vodka. What I just feel like, what can man? we fit inside somebody's ass? And I just figured that was the most... Like, Didn't we already talk about my fucking big ass? You all right, fair enough, fair enough. This is what I'm looking for in the ass <laughs> department. You see the girth on this bitch? The fuck, man? Yeah. I just wish this was filled with vodka, son. I, I definitely should have gotten more. I had that volunteer to give you guys my hotel room <laughs> to do this. Like, just wait till I'm, after. I'm, just, I'm totally regretting. Just wait till after we and, turn the camera off. And the uh, the whole podcast is just MMA junkie. Hey, MMA junkie and uh, child molesters and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm so regretting some of the decisions I've made this evening. No, oh. you you made only good decisions. All right, so main event, we got Mark Hunt, Alexi Olenek. Uh, kind of a t- coin toss, in my opinion. No. No, I feel no. like either guy no, can... No, because... No, 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 no. Because oh, really? uh, Olenek, he can win by Ezekiel Choke. Uh, and if he does eight times the money, I'm on bet. Fucking on bet, okay? On bet. Fattar Okay, uh, but no, he, he's gonna lit up on the feet. He's gonna try to take it to the ground. He he got he's got zero, zero takedowns. He he got no takedowns. He's not gonna get it to the ground. He's not gonna rock Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt is gonna light him up on the feet, and he's gonna win a decision. That's what's gonna happen. Really, over five rounds. Yeah, uh, in the heavyweight division. <laughs> I mean, either either uh, Mark Hunt's gonna finish Olenek, or he's gonna win the decision. There's no way that Olenek wins. Or well, obviously. it could also be a draw, or also. No, <laughs> like, I love that. I'm not. I'm not going. <laughs> to I believe that. Mark Hunt is gonna win either by finish, it could also no. be or no. by decision. <laughs> I'm or... not going to Sebastian now, <laughs> but like, oh, anything that happened in this fight, I'm not gonna go the. Who the fuck was it that? We asked him like about fight, and he's like, "Oh, the yeah, no, the, so be- the, 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 the best, the yeah. best fighter is gonna win." Oh, it was uh, David Tamer. The best fighter is gonna win. No, no, no. Mark Hunt's gonna win by decision or knockout. Easy, easy money. I, I'm leaning slightly towards Mark Hunt in this one, but not by a lot. Um, yeah, I, I, really? I, really slightly. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I feel that like. Olenek, he's really fucking good at what he does. Today. Olenek could barely even fucking uh, get the coordination to walk to the scales. How is he going to fucking win a well, fight? He's just so fucking weird. Like, he doesn't know where he's going. Yeah. He just, but, like, it's awkward the way he moves. It's so and... funny. Like, so he has, what, 56 wins and then uh, double-digit losses. And he's still not sure what he's doing with Wayne's. Hey, bro, when are you going to learn? What the fuck is going on? How the fuck can you be confused with how weigh-ins work after 50-plus fights? No, 70-plus yeah. fights. What, what the fuck is going on? Like, they didn't even do a stare-down. They did, it like, a fucking tackle. What the f- A shoulder bump. Yeah. A shoulder bump. Now, listen, uh, it, it's funny because Alexi Olenek is one of those guys, like, it's crazy. He... Uh, I mean, I, and I, I laugh about it every time, like, because and, and, what he did this week is what he does all the time. He, he, he like, he, it looks like he can barely like walk. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, but but I'll tell you this, I, I'll never forget. I remember, it, it, you know, it's funny because we were talking about this event earlier tonight. Um, but Big Nog when he knocked out Brendan Schaub in 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 Brazil, right? I remember him like like walking to the scales to weigh in. This was before we had ceremonial weigh-ins, you know, and, and all that. So he was doing the real weigh-in. He was like. You know, kind of 
uh, just barely moving to the scale. And, like, you know, to take his pants off, he had to, like, lean on somebody. I mean, it was just so, I'm like, oh, this guy can barely move, you know. And then and he comes that, out and knocks out Brendan Schaub. Big Nog, who doesn't even cut weight. Yeah. So that's just him not warmed up. It's like. just that he can barely move. But Alexi's the same way, and he's always that way. Like, it's weird. Like, he, he, he acts like he doesn't know where he's going. Or not acts like him. He just does what he does. But you talk to anybody that trains with Alexi Olenek, they'll say, like, dude, a, his submission knowledge is ridiculous, and B, his strength and his squeeze is insane. So, I mean, I, I do I do give him a chance to win this fight. I mean, I, I do kind of agree, and I love the fact that the open workouts, he was like, you know, Dan Hardy was on point. Dan Hardy was like, hey, let's just ask the question everybody wants to know. Like, you know, can you Ezekiel choke Mark Hunt? He's like, the man has no neck. And, and, and he said, nope. Ezekiel choke eight times. All that, eight times the odds. That's amazing. That's amazing. They give odds on you the Ezekiel choke. You think I can choke. get an Ezekiel choke on on, on John? It'd no. be pretty hard. Uh, absolutely that's, not. That's no. a Mark Hunt. Absolutely not. Definitely not. So the thing is, I I, I do give him a chance, and and I think I because I, I, he, he does. I mean, the Ezekiel choke is famous because like he pulled it off, and mm. when you pull off an Ezekiel choke while somebody's mounted on you, like you know that's that's insane. But he does have other you know submissions in the bag. It's not like that's all of he has. Of course, yeah. But but that said. I, I got to be honest. I'm leaning towards Mark Hunt as well, um, because Mark Hunt does have surprisingly good takedown defense, right? Like I don't think he gets enough credit because once he, the thing is, like once you get Mark Hunt down, it's it, you know he's not good from his back. That's 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 fair. He's just not that good from that position. But his takedown defense is better, and Olenek isn't one of those guys that has like incredible take like takedowns. You know, what I mean, he doesn't. He's not like Brock Lesnar is just going to shoot from across the cage with some power double leg or whatever. You know, like, he's got to get you down from certain positions. And, again, he's willing to pull guard. And I don't think you want to pull guard against Mark Hunt, man. I don't think you want to be underneath him. Um, so, you know, does Olenek have a chance? Yeah, he has a chance, man. He's sneaky. He's a veteran. He's been around. You talk about the number of fights he has. But I just feel like uh, the difficulty uh, – I, I, I just lead towards Mark Hunt. But – do you think that Mark Hunt is going to allow the fight to even get to him being all in his guard? doesn't make any sense. I mean, he needs to make it a K1 fight where, where or when That's all not going to happen, though. Yeah, but when all in it falls in his back, he's going to be like, oh, hey. Fuck you. No, I agree. And then just back up. No, know? that's why I agree. No, and that's and that's why I say it's, it's going to be tough because you're right, man. Mark Hunt is going to fight from range. He's not like if it even gets to a tie clinch, like Mark Hunt is probably going to want to back away. Like there's no that's reason. That's what that, I would fucking do. Yeah, just stay away, stay away, keep range. And that's the thing. That's why I do think this is a tough fight for Olenek because Olenek is not fast. He's not quick. He's not going to close distance. Like he's not young. He's he has not to, hairy. Well, he's I'm, not as uh, technical. He's not. I don't know. I, yeah. So so many things he's not. It's almost hating on the Russians. Here. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. No, it's, it's a gay joke. So many. Yo, Vlad, Russians. he's over here, bro. Yeah, he's over it's, here. It, Get him yeah, over here. Vlad. I see that there's a van out there watching <laughs> right from there. No, uh, no, well, listen. Shit, there is a van. Actually. <laughs> no, no, listen. Uh, I'm not scared, bro. I'm not to, scared, to, homie. To I be honest, Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz behind me. No, I'm not scared. Homie. They're not gonna back you up. I feel like the I feel like the though. smart pick here is Hunt. But to th this one thing is I always like to be careful about because I do feel like the the right pick is Hunt. But if you're like, hey, you know what, man, I'm gonna bet my mortgage payment on this because it, you're right. There's no way Mark Hunt can lose. No, Alexi Olenek is a crafty veteran, dude. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we love about the sport. Anything can happen. And bro, he's a crafty veteran. He's got dangerous submissions. He does have leg locks. You know, he does have other options. So there are possibilities for Olenek. But I do feel like the smart play here is Hunt. I mean, if you can bet your house, bet your house on fucking Meyer Big Tyson mob. Asha, mm. don't bet your house. You already bet your house one time this month. Don't do that mistake again. He bet on Darren. He bet on Darren Till. And you know what happened uh, the Monday? We do a podcast on Mondays. He didn't show up. He was like, oh, I'm sick. Whatever, pussy. Sick. Just deal with the fucking loss. Pussy. I mean, he lost his house. Yeah, he was fucking jerking off to Darren Till for like fucking four months or something like that. And then I love Darren Till, but I mean. Four months? Okay, not longer. Like way longer. Like way at least a year. longer. Hmm. Probably more than two years. I mean, he was. Uh, I mean, he's not one to like swallow shots, but. 
he swallowed, he swallowed shot Darren there. Till's shots. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping that's a and bad he translation. Deep, he deep throated that shit. I mean, he's. I mean, he, he, he was dri- he was driving the fucking bandwagon. Oh yeah, you know, he was he wasn't just conducting that train. He was conducting the he train conducting into. The no, he was conducting the train. train into his asshole. He was driving the, the Darren Till train. All right, all right. All right. You guys, anything else asshole. for me? Or are we done? Where are we done now? Are you guys? <laughs> all right, we're, we're I believe we're, I, b- I believe we're, we're running. We're yeah. running out of time. Okay, uh, so let's just. Uh, I'm just gonna say it real quick. Uh, I think that uh, Mark Hunt wins. As I well. think you have the worst fucking uh, uh, whatever thing to open your phone. Password. Yeah. yeah. No. It, it, it's it, it, way it, way too advanced. It, for you. It's an arrow. I thought you were smart, but see, after seeing you like playing around with your phone, I thought so too. But I'm half Mexican. It just doesn't half work Mexican out. or half fucking uh, Neanderthal, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Point being, uh, I'm think I'm leaning more towards Mark Hunt in this fight, and uh, John Mark is just I'm, fucking I'm leaving. He just doesn't fucking want well, to. Well, at anymore. least he did like an hour and change, and then he was out. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, so we appreciate uh, all you guys. Uh, I'm thinking Mark Hunt second round TKO. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're watching this, then obviously fucking God bless you, because you've watched up an hour and a half of fucking MMA and it's bullshit. So, uh, thank you if, for that. If you're watching this, you should go to ombet.com and place your fucking bets, because you ain't gonna find uh, odds better than Ombet. Not only are they... Not only do they have the best odds, they're first, too. I mean... So, ombed.com. Exactly. Kim, fuck you. <laughs> Alright, thank you, everybody. Good night. We had a lot of fun here. And, uh. I, I need more vodka. What the fuck are we doing? We got no more vodka. But, well, yeah. Good so night. We need to go to the convenience store and get some Skull! vodka. Bro. No, we Skull. can't because we don't sell alcohol after 10 o'clock. Oh, you fucking faggot. <laughs> okay, squat. Squat.